If you've ever used Ableton Live for keys on stage, then you're probably familiar with this happening. You, you're playing a pad sound, you've got a really beautiful pad sound happening. You get to the end of your song, Suddenly you, you decide to stop Ableton before you go to your next song. So you press stop and suddenly your pad sound starts to die out. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is why that's happening and one potential solution that you could do to uh, keep it from happening. Now, the reason it's happening, it's actually a safety precaution. I'm glad Ableton has it there, even though it's kind of a pain in the butt whenever you're trying to run key sounds in live and the first time it happens, you have no clue what's going on. It's actually a safety precaution because here, let's imagine that uh, I'm playing my pad sound, right? Uh, and and some, something, uh, maybe something suddenly happens to where because of some MIDI routing, um, uh, I started ended up with a MIDI feedback loop. That means it just keeps going. Maybe my sustain pedal stuck. Uh, Ableton's made it to where if I press stop, then suddenly that problem is going to go away. It's not going to keep looping. And if I stopped Ableton and things kept going, then who knows what kind of scenarios we could get ourselves into and who knows how we could stop them at that point. A lot of keyboards have like a, a MIDI panic button uh, on them. I, I'm looking at one right in front of me that stops the, the MIDI. It's, it's similar uh, to that on a keyboard. You see a panic button like the one in front of me. Uh, that's what Ableton's stop button is. But here, let's talk about how to solve this. OK, um, so the easiest solution to keep Ableton from cutting off your pad sounds is to not press stop. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, okay, thanks for that, Well, That was really beneficial and helpful. But I, I, I wanna propose a, a different solution. Instead of pressing stop, uh, we're going to jump later to the last song in our arrangement, and we're gonna treat that as our stop. Here's how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna go to the end of my song here, and uh, I'm gonna right click, uh, go to add locator, and we're gonna just call this stop, okay? So this is gonna become my stop locator. It's super important to know um, there's nothing after this. So I've got three songs in my set, and then after this, I, I have nothing else. It's, it's just stop. Now, I'm gonna go and MIDI map this uh, because I want this MIDI map to uh, a button on my MIDI controller. So we're gonna go there and press that, okay? And now we're gonna go and let's do the same thing we did before. I'm gonna play my pad sound here. Okay, and I'm going to turn this down just so it doesn't get too loud for us. Okay, so our pad's going to keep going there. We're going to get to the end of our song. All right, that's going to fade out. Now, let's say we wanted to stop. I'm going to press my stop button that I mapped to on my uh, MIDI controller. Okay, and so now we're at the end of the song. Now, because we're at the end of the song, um, my song content isn't playing, right? Nothing's playing there, uh, but I jump to that stop clip. Now, what's nice is there's nothing after it, so it's, it's gonna just keep playing, and I could continue to play my pad sound if I wanted to, um, right? and just keep that going, which is super great. Now let's talk about how to get out of that. And I should mention, if you know how to set up the IEC driver and a virtual MIDI bus, and we've talked about that in, in lots of videos before on this channel, then you could set this up to where this just continues to loop, right? We could create a MIDI clip here that loops after a measure, and we just continue to loop this over and over instead of it just going to the right. But this is the easiest solution to do. It requires no setup, no nothing. We just literally have our stop locator. We get to the end of the song. Instead of pressing stop, we press our MIDI button that's mapped to the stop locator. Okay. Now, the additional thing that I would suggest here, let's say we want to get out of this and get back to a song. Um, I'm going to, actually, I've already mapped on my, my keyboard here. I've mapped one, two, and three. So let's map, um, let's map S to stop here so I can use my computer keyboard as well too. And let's say we get to the end of this. I want to make it to where... I, I'm quote unquote stopped. My pad is still going. I want to make it to where when I trigger song two to start uh, into song two, that it immediately jumps there. So here's my kind of trick for doing that. I'm going to go to this section here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a time signature change. And this time I'm going to do one four. Okay. So instead of four, four, um, or really whatever time signature at, we could even do one eight if we wanted to, you know, it doesn't matter, but we want to make sure it's just one note value, you know, instead of four, or three up front, or two up front, or six up front, or 12, we want it to be a one, okay? So now here's the benefit of this. Um, let's say we're doing uh, the end of song one here again, okay? Then let's press, uh, let's trigger our pad. I'll press stop here to um, uh, jump us to the end. Okay, Intro let's jump to two, the end, we'll get three, out of that. Four. Okay, so now we're in stop. Um, let me continue to play. I, I could just kind of play my pad sound stuff here. Let's say we want to go back to song two. Okay. And I think that's in, uh, I think that's in the key of D if I remember correctly. Okay. So I'll change keys. There's not a great transition, but this video is not about transitions. So now let me press two on my keyboard. Okay. Intro two, three, four. 
Okay, great. So now let's get back to our stop there. All right, let's get out of that. So we're back to stop. Okay, and you can see that I quickly transition. As soon as I press, let's press uh, two again. As soon as I press two, we go there. Let's press uh, three. One, I jump two, to three. Let three, me get us to our stop. Four. Okay, so we're back at stop. So now if I press three again, one, right? Two, as soon as I press three. it, then we're going to instantly jump to that. And the reason that that's happening is if you've ever tried to trigger something in Ableton Live and it doesn't go right away, we don't want to wait four measures. The reason it didn't go right away is because of global quantization. This is set to one bar up here. Um, I've got mine set to one eight or one four or whatever value you want to, uh, so that suddenly when I get to this section, Live thinks that we're in a different time signature. And then when I trigger something, it's going to wait to the next downbeat of one to trigger that. And if there's only one downbeat, then almost instantly after I trigger it, um, we're going to jump to that section. So that's a really simple, easy way to, uh, to have Ableton stop killing your pad sounds and do this without having to set up the IEC driver or anything like that. Now, if you're someone who has experience with the IEC driver, then another solution you could do, and I'm not going to show you how to do this in this video, but just as a mention, is you could create what I call like a loop or flow transition to where at the end of your song, instead of stopping, um, just have it continue to loop here until you're ready to move on and then have a, you know, maybe a, a MIDI controller button on your MIDI controller signed to where when you disable that loop, then you go to your next song and that will allow you to keep your pad going, be really consistent um, and not have Ableton stop your pad sounds, which is great. So that's a look at how to have Ableton uh, not kill your pad sounds when you press stop. Uh, and it's pretty simple. It's nothing complex, but uh, it's a really useful tool and trick that you can start implementing now. If you're looking for some other useful tips and tricks and tools that are going to help uh, make using Ableton Live on stage a lot easier, then head to from studio to stage.com slash free. I've got a lot of content, uh, free tracks, templates, free click tracks, free pad sounds. If you're looking for some drone pads that you can use in Ableton Live, all sorts of things. And you can get that by heading to from studio to stage.com slash free. And then I post content like this every single day on this channel. It goes live at 10 a.m. Central. You can join in on the live chat if you want to, to interact. Some days I'm there, um, but you're able to check with anyone that's watching this all over the world, which is super cool. Um, but to make sure you see that, hit subscribe uh, on this channel and then do me a favor, hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And when you do that, you're going to get a notification on your phone that I just posted a new video. And if you see the title and it makes sense and sounds interesting to you, then click through, watch it. If not, skip it and you can watch the next one, which again, will be out 10 a.m. Central the next day. Thanks so much for watching this one. Everybody will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.